So it is half past five on a Sunday evening. And in less than 12 hours, we are going to have a blood moon, which is a lunar eclipse. So when the earth is blocking the moon from the sun and the, the moon will be in the earth's shadow. And when that happens because of light rays and science, um, the moon will turn red, uh, hence why it's called a blood moon. So I want to photograph that. But the problem with a blood moon or shooting anything astro, you need clear skies. And there's not many clear skies in the UK. So fortunately enough, this weekend I've happened to uh, find myself in the middle of England, roughly the middle of England, near Birmingham, uh, which is where I am now. Uh, so I made the decision that I'm going to pack my stuff and just head wherever there's clear skies. And at the moment it seems to be, I could head up to the Lake District or I could go to North Wales, Snowdane, Snowdonia. I haven't done any photography in Snowdonia, so I'm thinking I'm going to head there. That's the plan. Um, problem with forecasts are, you know, they're just a, a good guess. So, um, I've got to make a final decision from where I am now, which way to head, because it's going to be a couple of hours journey, whichever way I'm going. Um, so, I've got my uh, coffee, I'm going to look at the maps, look at the forecast, make a decision, and then in the next few hours I will be in that place. So there we go. And we'll see you when I get where I'm going. Yeah. I don't know how well you can see me because <laughs> it's like nine o'clock at night and it's pretty dark but this camera is something else when it comes to uh, picking up some uh, light from nothing. We got the full moon going on up here and um, I'm in Snowdonia. Obviously it's very overcast um, and considering it's quite overcast, you can still see the full moon. But the problem's going to be when we hit the blood moon, that strong light that's being reflected from the, the sun is going to disappear. So it's going to be a lot fainter. So would struggle to cut through thick cloud like this. Um, but, ah, oh, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful, beautiful place. It's going to be between 20 and 30 degrees in the sky, so I'm going to be looking up, looking up. So that's uh, that's why I needed mountains and uh, some beautiful mountains here. That is for sure. So welcome to my humble abode this evening. One of the handy things we've had in a van. So I can just uh, park up without dropping my phone. Park up anywhere and uh, sleep in the back. So <laughs> I'm about what, 10, 15 minutes away from where I need to be. And uh, 
so the blood moon's going to be at its peak at 5 a.m. So I want to get there for about three, half three. So I'm going to get a few hours kip in the back of the van and then uh, up early. It is uh, like quarter to three in the morning and we have been treated to some most beautiful clear skies with the full moon up here. Perfect, absolutely perfect. In fact, we've got some uh, smattering of clouds around the tops of the mountains, which just adds that little bit of... Mm, and it is freezing cold. But I tell you what, there's nothing like... Nothing like that feeling of being super cosy warm in your sleeping bag. It's just cold around you. Oh. So, you can see the problem here. We have these massive mountains tripping just here. But the, the full moon, the moon is way up in the sky. Obviously it's coming down. It's on its downward trajectory now. In about two hours, when it reaches its peak, it will be lowered down. But I'm going to have to get near to this mountain to really... So I'm not just got dead space. So that's something I'm going to have to play with. I'm just kind of traveling up and down the road here of working out where best to park and set up the camera but mamma mia this is a crazy nice beautiful morning with the amazing potential for the blood moon mm, mama like doing this last hour <laughs> so I've come up onto this little mound and I'm overlooking the valley here we're starting to have a partial eclipse going on we're about a third of the way across of the moon eclipsed and I'm just kind of looking around for um, foreground compositions that can include include the mountain on the left a bit of the valley and the mountains on the right and then the uh, the moon as it comes down in the sky as, the, uh, as it goes into the eclipse, as it's behind Earth's shadow, you have all these stars popping out because uh, they're not having, not having to fight against the luminance of the moon. So that's going to be super nice when that happens. So I've got an hour to sort out my composition ready for that crucial shot. Captain's log. <laughs> oh man, zero degrees C, and uh, basically, when that full moon went away, the temperature just dropped, and uh, I'm laid up. I've got like three pairs of trousers on, basically, four or five layers up the top here. Hats, you know, gloves. Although the frustrating thing with wearing gloves and cameras is they don't really mix well, so you tend not to wear the gloves. And uh, yeah, so warming up. Blood moon is not. I mean, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong, it is beautiful, but it's 
I was expecting it to be kind of brighter, but then um, I suppose that's the internet for you. False, false kind of uh, ideas it gives you. But anyway, enjoying this. It's 20 past five. The engine running. The heated seat is on. Let's give this uh, 10, 20 minutes and uh, see what happens. Oh, right. I just went for a quick 10 minute drive, warm the vehicle up, warm me up, hopefully warm the camera up, because that A7 or 2 stopped working. And it is 5.39, and the Blood Moon finishes in four minutes. Right, I'm gonna shove this 35mm 1.4 on, because that was just before the camera gave up that I was getting the best results with that. And then, um, I'm not going to bother recording anything because I haven't got the time. So, quick 10 minutes and then back to the van. And then, sunrise. Okay. time is 22 8 it's about half an hour before sunrise clear sky is still a few odd little clouds hanging around but I'm gonna get a sunrise shoot in so I've uh, crossed the road and then heading slightly up the hill the other side where there's a stream running down so I want to use that as a foreground to get triffin in triffin not trifan that's for sure um yes so the light's going to be coming from the east yeah we've got beautiful snow-capped mountains around and it's lovely and chilly just going to head up there and get a sunrise pick before i head home for a six hour journey yeah let's get going <laughs> So I've got myself a pretty nice looking composition already. I've only come up it's like a five minute walk from the car and we have uh, a style here going over this beautiful wall and then boom mountain range, snow capped peaks, you know some farm buildings for interest, these rocks here just add in something to the foreground so uh, yeah I think I'm gonna work with this um, that sky over there is looking it's hitting the tops of the clouds there it's, it's almost pure fire but it's not it's a pinky red that and if it can just hit the top of the mountain there this will be a good good night and morning uh, right okay composition sorted came up a little bit higher it means I'm looking down more on the foreground interest of this big rock uh, this style in the wall looking over a bit more of this land the mid ground and then whoosh up into the mountain these few clouds are just mm, pink and beautiful what I've decided to do go portrait and I'm probably going to pano it and uh, then I can decide if I want it as a pano or just this one shot. At the moment, with uh, 10 minutes before sunrise, I am doing it at f8, uh, ISO 50 and I'm underexposing by about a stop so that nothing's clipping on the histogram, neither the highlights or the shadows and uh, so that gives uh, f8 so that gives me two and a half seconds so uh, see how we do with that right 
but we're not quite sharp enough on the mountain so I'm gonna shoot up to f11 that's a four second exposure now there we are beautifully sharp on everything right so let's start panoing because that sky is looking crazy right now isn't it just want to do a final bit to camera and the battery dies but saying that uh, the batteries uh, these new Sony batteries oh, they last so much longer and uh, so I filmed all last night this morning up to just then on one battery <coughs> including the fact that it was running in sub-zero temperatures most of the night got to give it give it to that and the camera didn't pack up like the a7r2 did so uh sony uh they're, they're getting things right they're getting things right anyway super happy how uh the sunrise shoot turned out super happy with that no i've got some good images there regards to the blood moon i don't know i had a quick look earlier and um I think they're going to need some work. There's there's no kind of standout image I can see. I think there's going to be a bit of uh, uh, merging of images uh, because of the dark sky and the bright moon and all this kind of stuff. So uh, we have to see how that turns out. Hence why I haven't shown it yet. I'll show it at the end if I do uh, make a decent image. Um, but other than that first time shooting in uh, North Wales and loving it absolutely beautiful it's got a different vibe to the lakes a bit more raw a bit more sharper does that make sense but anyway I appreciate you watching uh, it's been a while since I've done a video um, I kind of only want to do videos that really uh, are worthwhile shooting if you know what I mean um, Something like this, a blood moon, doesn't happen often. Plus, visiting a new area. Me popping out down my back garden doesn't feel too inspiring at times. Um, so, but uh, in the future, in the future, at the end of March, I am off to the Faroe Islands. So, I will definitely be doing some videos from there. <clears throat> so, if you're not subscribed, you're gonna have to subscribe so you can make sure you see the future videos of the fair, beautiful Faroe Islands. So, thanks for watching. Arrivederci, ciao for now.